Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the match as we welcome to the stage Jasper the Executioner Svenza! And now for the chance to bite back, let's hear it for Team USA's Marshall Ken! OK, let's have a quick chat with these two players before we get this match underway. Marshall, let me talk to you first. Big ask, do you guys still believe you win it or are you just taking it one game at a time? Well, the scoreboard's not 19 yet, so uh, we're not going to count ourselves out yet. I know it's a tough hill to climb, but if we get there, it's going to make the win that much more glorious. Absolutely. In terms of your own personal form, you've been a real central part of your team's strategy, playing quite a few games in a row. You embrace this kind of situation, don't you? Absolutely. I always look forward to the challenge. I love a challenge because, like I said, it makes the win that much, much better. OK, well, good luck in this game. Yes, but you could be the man to do it for Team Europe. How does that feel? It feels amazing, but, you know, I wouldn't have this chance without my teammates. We've all been bowling great, and I just hope I can finish it off. OK, well, very good luck to you both. We're looking forward to watching this game. Europe could wrap up the Weber Cup in the next few minutes, or America could get one step closer. We'll find out in a couple of moments. The Americans' Weber Cup campaign started so well. They were 7-4 up at one point. Since then, of the last 19 points available, they have garnered just five. That is why they stand on the threshold of elimination from yet another Weber Cup. It could be five in a row, and Jesper Svensson, the left-hander, will have the advantage of working with fresh oil on this lane. In contrast, Marshall Kent on the other side, the right-hander, will have to try and work through some pretty old oil that's moved around. It wouldn't be at all a surprise to see him loft his balls, as he often does in these situations. But the pressure is really on Kent. It's on him to try and keep the Americans alive. 248 average game score for Marshall Kent, but you saw that uh, Jesper's got a 251 average. And Nick, you're quite right. The two-handed Swede, left-handed Swede, will be out on his own. Left-hand side of the lane. No one's been out to create a track area for him. Fresh oil, and it could be monster. The one thing we do know with Jesper, as we've seen all weekend, nothing's automatic with him. He does tend to leave a lot of single pins standing, but if he can cure that little hiccup in his game, he is virtually unplayable, as he was on Friday night. I mean, Jesper was single-handedly keeping the American ship, uh, the, the European ship afloat as the Americans got off to that fast start on Friday. Remember, they were 4-1 up at one point. The only European to get a point was Jesper. And uh, he picked up another one against Kyle Troop as well. Yes, the uh, Team USA took both sessions Friday night and Saturday, the first two sessions, both four points to three. But this man won both his singles on the Friday night. That just kept Europe in touch. And ironically, it was the rest of them that really got their game together as he cooled off a little bit on the Saturday. Isn't it interesting how the American teams are there sort of uh, encouraging Jesper Svensson to play well? I mean, they play on the American tour together, they travel together, they're all good friends, but someone's going to have to win this game, and someone's going to have to win the Weber Cup. I tell you, Sean Rash is very prominent there, the American skipper. I'm sure it's not all just to offer his good luck to the young Swede. Well, I think it's going to take a lot to knock this fella out of his game. Svensson gets the advantage of going first, anything he does... Kent has to match and at some point will have to better 
All eyes will be on that bottom left-hand pin as we look. The seven pin, that's where he's had his problems. If he's consistently kicking that out, he's going to be virtually unstoppable. Well, that's uh, not a good sign. You called it. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Well, that's, th th that is the entire story of this man's game. If he makes those corner pins, that corner seven, he's on fire. But he doesn't always make them. Yeah, unfortunately, a little bit of light on the head pin there, which is why that corner pin is standing. He needs to hit the number one pin a bit higher. Not harder, but higher. More face on. Yeah, he just made that, you know. Uh, just is good enough. And it'll be interesting to see what Marshall Kent does now. Will he just go for the conventional delivery of the ball? Just some running repairs to the grip as he gets ready. I haven't seen too much of that going on during the Weber Cup this weekend. Will he loft it or will he just go conventional and see what that oil's doing? What he can't afford to do is any experimentation. This is not a match that he can experiment in. He's got to have a game plan and got to stick to it and execute it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nick, straight out the trap. It's got to be good. So what's he going to do? The loft? No, it's not. He doesn't need it either. What a great opening shot there from Marshall Kent. That'll do his confidence a lot of good. Straight down fourth arrow, hits the down lane marker. A, a fraction high, which is why the seven pins late. But they've all gone. Seven pin going to do this time. It goes. Just a fraction of adjustment on the head pin there, and that's uh, why that corner pin's gone. Gets to the break point, turns right, hits the head pin just that little bit higher. Great looking shot. If he replicates that, and he's certainly capable of it, this could be strike after strike. But Kent has got the early advantage. So the youngster hits the head pin and is lucky to avoid the split. He's the baby of the American team, not 25 till next, later this month, I think, Marshall. But, uh, has shown great maturity throughout this competition and indeed throughout his career, but that's not one of his better shots. Now in, uh, in slow motion you can see the ball was uh, too heavy on the head pin. A hard and straight uh, shot here with his spare ball for this single pin. Ooh. And that was, uh, as, <laughs> was as close as it should have been. Yeah, dodged one there, Marshall. An open frame there really would have been an aberration. Well, let's not take anything away from Marshall Kent. I mean, it, he's actually re ranked number one on the World Tour at the moment, yeah, although he may not be having a fantastic Weber Cup. This man certainly is. Yeah, <laughs> if he's got that corner pin sorted out, watch out. I mean, he's certainly capable of just striking off the sheet here. And as much as this is a team game, they all want to have the honour of being the guy that bowls the ball that wins the Weber Cup. Oh yeah, absolutely, and it would be great for Jesper Svensson to be that man. Marshall Kent here has plans of his own to do something about that. Uh, he, with a very nice pocket hit, stays on pace. Yes, levels the score after three frames. 79 apiece. This is a great looking shot. Right in the one through pocket, carries all 10 pins. Yeah. And there we see. Dead level. Looking ahead a little bit, if Kent can hold his nerve and pull off a big game here. The next matchup is Kyle Troop against Martin Larson. Now, on current form, 
The Americans would think that's a match Troop can win if they can get back-to-back -back wins. It's amazing what a bit of momentum will do. So they will want to get this job finished as soon as possible, the Europeans, and they're heading in the right direction as the young Swede brings up Turkey. Three magic strikes yet. The first one, the first frame wasn't too bad either. But he's made the adjustment. He's hitting that hip, and it's just a fraction higher than before. And that's the uh, reason he's carrying all ten. He's kicking that seven pin out. Well, he's had enough of that seven pin, hasn't he? I mean, that was that was his Saturday disaster pin. That was time after time he would miss it. It seemed. And then there was a couple of times when he worked that one out. He left the ten up. You remember those? Well, that's right. Yes. <laughs> It just wasn't going for him, was it? Nine was his favourite number. That was yesterday. Right now, the focus is on Marshall Kent to try and stay with Svensson, and he leaves the ten, or does he? No, the oh, messenger's missed it. Yeah, it was a short messenger. Didn't quite make it, which is unfortunate, but uh, it's, a, it's a loss of pin count for the American side. Look at this messenger. That should have hit. And it would have knocked it over. Yeah, there's no question. Oh, look at that look momentum. How close but, that is. Yeah, a couple of millimetres. So he falls behind. Now he was a little bit iffy with his single pin spare ball last time, and that was flush. It's Jesper, you know, for all his strengths. If you had to pick poorest single pin bowler in this year's Weber Cup, it's not him, it's Jesper. He missed a couple of those sevens. But he's still averaging 250. I know, it's incredible <laughs> when, you, when you look at it. it, it is, he has been so close to near perfect, Svensson. Um, that is what he's looking to try and achieve here. Still on 280 plus pace. Three in a row in the bank. Make that four. Hey, this is looking ominous. Nick, you're quite right. <laughs> I wouldn't disagree with you. He looks locked and loaded. Absolute uh, look of determination on his face. What a great looking shot this is. Just absolutely rips, rips the rack. And you can be assured that this man wants to be the, the lad to lift the Weber Cup with a victory here. Well, now nothing else but a strike will do for Kent. Let's see how he handles this pressure cooker that is threatening to just boil over here now from the American perspective. Good pocket hit, stayed with it. Good shot that from Kent. Yeah, he struck every other frame. I mean, he's not playing a bad game. He's playing the right line, he's hit in the pocket, but... Uh, Still 11 pins adrift. Another great shot here, though. Just keeping him in the game. Well, yeah, you're right that it's not a bad performance at all. It hasn't been a bad performance. But look at what Don Barrett did, 289. Look at what Stu Williams did, 279. Right now, Jesper Svensson is still on course for 289. I mean, the Europeans in this final session have elevated their game to a completely new level. Well, they're almost like cricket scores, aren't they? Just crazy numbers. Barrett and Williams with a Weber Cup best coming into this one. Svensson has already achieved a 289. He remains on course to replicate that. And this one wasn't even in the pocket. And he still mixed them up and got 10. It was a light pocket hit and he knows how fortunate that was. Because it's made five in a row. This is the man under pressure. He just has to follow suit and okay. hope, hope that Svensson leaves a pin standing somewhere. Uh, he can't do any more than this. I mean, the man's on course for a 278 through six. It's terrific bowling, this. Yeah, four strikes for... Marshall Kent out of his six frames. He's only 11 pins behind on the count. Well, it only needs 
one of those corner pins to stand up for Svensson. And if the American can strike off the back of that, we are too close to call, so there's no way that he is planning any celebrations just yet. A lot of work to be done here, but working a five-bagger. Here he comes again, looking for the big six, and there is that corner pin. It makes you wonder how it stands up, doesn't it? A really great-looking pocket shot. Leaves the seven pin standing, so out comes that spare ball yet again. You can only just see on the slow mo replay why it's standing there. Just wasn't perfect on the head pin. So, spare here, he loses 11 pins on the count. He's not messing about with these single pins either. Yes, one knows this is no time to be uh, leaving one of those standing, but just like that, if Marshall Kent is able to take another strike, we are dead level going into the business end of this one. There will be three frames to go. So this is the moment Kent has been waiting for. Three strikes out of his last four have kept him within touching distance. He can level this one up with another strike here. Well, he's just taking his time. He's taken a re-rack on the pin spotter, which he's allowed to do. Just gathering his thoughts. He knows how important this ball is. Uh, this could be a, uh, a match loser if he doesn't make it. Absolutely looking for 10 to make three strikes in a row. Well, for Team USA, this has got to be all 10. That was a huge shot. Boy, he's responded so well here, Marshall Kent. We go all square after seven frames. Hey, the champagne might be on ice somewhere, but nobody's pulling any corks out the bottles yet. Not yet. Certainly holding his own is Marshall. Great looking scorecard from both players. Both of them, yeah. yeah, you're looking at two seven pins for Jesper. That's it. So three frames for one of these two to make their move. The first man to leave a pin standing may well be the man that loses this point. Look at that. Would you believe it? It's almost becoming habitual, isn't it? You would say to Jesper Svensson, you bowl a fantastic game, but you must get those corner pins out more often. And somewhere right now, Martin Larson and Kyle Troop are warming up because they are due up next. And from leading, with Kent chasing him, here in frame eight, now Jesper Svensson is the man doing the chasing. If Kent strikes out, the Americans stay alive. For the first time in this match, Marshall Kent steps up knowing that a strike puts him in front. What a change around. Pretty much pressure time for Marshall, but uh, he's an experienced campaigner. He's won all around the world. He's played head-to-head -head match play before. This could be one of his biggest games to date. you believe it <laughs> nothing wrong with that shot either that's just bad luck the messenger wouldn't take that 10 out either well as we saw Svensson leave the seven we see uh, Kent leave the 10 look at that just too much it was a it was a flat 10 because the six pin just laid dead in the in the channel didn't it, it was twice that's happened to him the messenger has come up just short so a spare to stay level going into the foundation frame and we could be looking at a sudden death shootout <laughs> I wasn't going to go there but the word that's what we're looking at the word tie sort of just floated in front of me and I thought oh no surely not 
Well, if it does go, it will be a best of two frame shootout. But we're not there yet. This is effectively right here, a best of two frame shootout here in frame nine. If either of these players ever wanted to uh, guarantee two strikes in a row in their career, it's now. Who's got the advantage? Is it best to go first or is it best to go second? At this stage, it probably doesn't matter. I would probably want to put the score on the board. Only if it was a strike, mind you. Well, that's what Svensson will be wanting as he made the adjustment. There goes the seven. Now Kent has to match that. That's why I would have gone to first. How much pressure now is on Marshall Kent? Not only to hit the pocket, but to carry all ten pins. Nothing else matters for Marshall Kent. Ten pins, however you get them. It can be a Brooklyn hit, it can be anything. He's just got to take ten. No style points. Here we are, frame nine. He's really toughed it out in this match, stuck around, but when he had his chance, that ten pin wouldn't go for him. Now he needs all ten just to stay level again. And it's the ten that's done him, and it might have done Team USA in this year's Weber Cup. And how unlucky can you get? He's actually bowled a very, very good game here. Just the odd single pin, and those two ten pins, frames eight and nine, could be the ruin. Unfortunately for the Team USA. Well, what it means is, Svensson strikes, you can start your car engine. Yes, indeedy. There wasn't much wrong with that pocket hit. And there wasn't much wrong with the previous one either. But Marshall Kent knows it's out of his hands now. Now, a nine spare from Svensson would open the door once again. <laughs> but, Don't go there. But Nick. he isn't thinking that. Nobody in this auditorium is thinking that. It comes down to one very simple equation. Jesper Svensson, the 22-year-old left-hander, the one-time bricklayer, now on the PBA Pro Tour, has that ball in his hand. And if he bowls a strike, Europe retain the Weber Cup and win it for a fifth consecutive year. Funny old game this is. <laughs> Tense times here at you know, the Barnsley Metrodome. Tense times here for Jesper Svensson, who's now got to spare this seven pin. That man's still alive. Team USA still breathing, flatlining, but there is a pulse. And yes, but this is no time to get this one wrong. He's got to make this single pin, and then that man has got to strike. That's Just to the, send it to overtime. That's the simple equation, yeah. Spare here, and then a strike for Kent, and it will tie. This has got to be dead on the money, and it is. It's a 2.56 for Svensson. It could be a 2.56 for Kent. I think this has been the best match of the entire weekend. It really has, because they've both been so unlucky with those corner pins. Look at Svensson's game and how close it was to being a th actually being a 300 game. And look how close Marshall was. Marshall's played very, very well. I don't think they've had a bad ball between them in this match. OK, it's all yours, Nick. This has to be a strike for Marshall Kent. Oh, the fate of Team USA rests on this next ball. It has to be a strike. Would you believe it? Would you believe it? That 10 has done him. And the Weber Cup remains in Europe. And everybody has started to realise it. It's celebration time now for Team Europe. 
not quite the way they would have wanted to win it, it has to be said. They would have loved a full rack of pins to go over, but the win is all that matters. They were an emphatic victor last year. This year, it's been another strong victory. When they were 7-4 down, you thought they were going to really be struggling, but boy, have they turned it on. They've won 15 of the next 20 points to secure another Weber Cup, and it was a team effort. All four of them have played their part here. The England-Sweden axis has done the business again for Team Europe. They remain kings on the world bowling stage. Well, we're going to catch our breath and we will have a lot of post-match reaction to come after this short break. Welcome back to the Weber Cup. Europe have won it for a fifth consecutive year. A brilliant performance from the Europeans. The home crowd are absolutely delighted and it's been a superb performance as well. Well, let's just uh, confirm what's happened here today. USA was so good over the first couple of sessions, but after that, the experience of Europe told. And in the way, they, in, they have won their fifth Weber Cup on the trot, and it's 19 points to 12 here in Barnsley. So well done to them. Well, it's time for the presentation party then. On behalf of sponsors Just Eat, I'd like to welcome Matcher and Multisports, Mr. Luke Riches, and Director of the British Tempin Bowling Association, Mr. Martin Webster. So I'm going to invite them on the stage uh, to say hello to the players. And ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big hand. Commiserations, a brilliant team performance. They couldn't manage it this weekend, but give it up for Team USA. And if I could ask the European team to step forward because they are the Weber Cup champions. And uh, if you'd like to hand over the trophy, ladies and gentlemen, the Weber Cup 2017 winners, Team Europe. I'm going to step in and have a word with you guys. I'm going to get right in the middle if that's okay and chat to you guys. Congratulations on a superb performance. Dom, let me ask you, how proud are you of your team and this performance? Yeah, extremely proud. We, we did so well. Uh, they came out firing. I mean, all credit to them. I think they're the best team that's been here for quite a few years and they showed that early. They got us down into a spot that we hadn't really felt in a few years and we had to dig really deep to get our best bowling coming out as soon as we could. Uh, I think yesterday afternoon it started and we went on one hell of a run from then on. Fifth year in a row. I mean, how does this compare to the other wins that you've had in Weber Cup history? Yeah, this is a little bit different. I mean, we didn't bowl very well at the beginning. Yes, we did. Yes, we bowled well all weekend. He struggled to carry sometimes. 
but the other three of us, um, we didn't really fire early, and we had to talk about and communicate, and I think that's what we did better than any other year. Exactly why we had to, what we had to do with our vulnerable and physically to actually strike. I think that's what we did, and that's why we, what do you say, Stu, we won the last, we won 16, 16 five, the last 21 points. I mean, that's incredible, and that is all because of the communication we had, uh, how we gel as a team, and what we know and the experiences we've had on this lane. Stuart, you said after your win in the penultimate match tonight that you felt that perhaps on paper you aren't necessarily as strong as the Americans, but the team spirit is so special. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I think it, it's a lot easier for us because we're, we're together all the time. I mean, you know, maybe they don't know each other as well. Like when we're in the practice, Martin, who isn't bowling, doesn't feel like he's bowling very well, has got enough confidence to say to me, you know, go and get that other bowling ball. That's going to be the one for you. And I come out and... I almost bowled a perfect game. So when you've got that support system between the four of us, I mean, it makes it much easier for sure. And it has been a terrific team effort from all four of you. Don, you've been here so many times. This is your 10th year. How long are you going to go on for? You've got another 20 years in you? Maybe not 20, but I think another 10, perhaps. I know, I'm only 32 compared to the other guys on the other team as old. But um, I've got <laughs> plenty of years left, and I think, you know, this team is one hell of a team. I think, you know, we had Oscar in there, a couple of other guys from Europe as well. We just travel all the way around the world together. And like Stu said, we know each other inside and out. We know how to uh, communicate with one another. And we know how to make each other bolder best. You know, when we're playing single tournaments and I don't win, I want one of these guys to win. And they feel the same way about me. And, and it shows when we're away. And when it comes to actually bowling together, you know, these guys are like family. We normally have, well, we have plenty of family and friends here. Everyone else here in Barnsley as well is part of that. And I think it's a tough place for those guys to come. It really is. And that's all because of you guys. You are fifth player, I say, every year. So a big thank you to you guys. A big thank you to Matchroom. A big thank you to Justy and Sky Sports for allowing us to come and perform on the best stage in the world. So thank you very much. Well done, Dom. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Europe. Well, let's have a quick chat with the Americans as well. Perhaps I can just come and stand in the middle with you. Uh, guys, commiserations. You were absolutely terrific this weekend. You couldn't quite get over the line. Um, what was the difference, do you think, between the two teams, Sean? Well, there's definitely a big difference between the four of them being together for so long. Uh, a couple of us have never been here. Uh, for EJ and I, Kyle and Marshall performed exceptional from their first year. You know, they struggled last year, and they were hungry and wanting it so much this year and you could tell by the performance of both of them they both bowled terrific um, EJ and I I think struggled at times with ball reaction and just getting comfortable with our footing uh, but it was a tremendous uh, event for us you know we came out firing like they said uh, it seemed like the hits were coming our way early uh, the first couple sessions it seemed like every messenger connected and they would they wouldn't connect for them and then uh, you know like Dom they all said it they weren't bowling very well to start and you could see it and uh, I don't know if it was their chicken or their tea or whatever, but uh, they had a little talk, and uh, you know their communication is extremely well. Uh, they're they're gentlemen, they're they're classes of our sport. They're uh, tremendous athletes, and uh, they bowled well. You know, in the beginning we all bowled them, and it was evident the last 21 matches. Thanks for the reminder uh, <laughs> that they out bowled us. And uh, hats off to them. Uh, I think we're hungry. You know, we came out like I said, firing. Uh, I, I'm sure there'll be some changes for this team, and whether it's the four of us back or somebody else, they're they're going to be hungry too, and I hope they're ready because uh, we are. So, okay, ladies and gentlemen, Team USA, give them a big hand. <laughs> well, final quick word with the Europeans then. How many years can you carry on winning this, Tommy? Are you confident that you can come back and do it all next year? Yeah, for sure. I mean, mine's undefeated. What, six years you've bowled now and you've won every time? So, I oh, know he's getting on a bit. You better ask him when he's going to retire. As long as he's still bowling, we're good. <laughs> and how much have you enjoyed this weekend personally? It's a great weekend. You know, I mean, this lane and the environment we're bowling and the atmosphere it creates and 
It's exhausting, it really is, but it is the best weekend of the whole year. It's the one I look forward to the most, especially, you know, so many friends and family coming over, makes it so special, and it really does bring the best out of all of us. And I've got four, uh, well, three fantastic teammates. We always throw Oski back in there as well. If we uh, were to lose, I'm sure he'd be back in. But we um, just have such a great team, such a great, we have such a great time as well. And this is what we do, this is what we love to do. This is our profession, to be professional bowlers. And we get to do it on the best stage in the world, in front of you guys, in front of everyone at home, in front of, yeah, my beautiful wife over there. And, and we all have partners and wives, and they're at home watching as well. They can always be here. But it's for everybody. I just want to say again, thanks to the Team USA coming over. I always have to go to their country. It's nice that they have to come and see me and mine. And uh, they were four of the greatest bowlers in the world. Uh, we had to put everything into this weekend to, to beat them. Well, congratulations to you all. Congratulations to Team Europe. One has a feeling the celebrations are going to go long into the night. Watch out, Barnsley. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for Team Europe, the 2017 winners of the Weber Cup in Barnsley. Thanks very much for joining us, and goodbye.